last week we released a video about Ceramic Speed's aero-driven concept drivetrain, and a lot of you didn't like it for a number of reasons. One, it didn't shift, one we didn't have it for mountain bikes, but all of that changes today, and we finally have a version on both mountain bikes and shifting for road bikes. And I have Alex Rosenberry, one of the lead designers from Ceramic Speed, who's gonna tell me everything we need to know about this drivetrain. So Alex, what do we need to know? Yeah, so when we first built this drivetrain, a lot of people wanted to know if it would ever work on a full suspension mountain bike. So we built a prototype concept bike to solve some of those challenges and figure out if it was possible. The two big challenges with a full suspension is the changing axle length and then keeping the shaft moving with the suspension as far as the angle goes. So the shaft on this bike uh, pivots about the front mount and then it also lengthens as it goes through its travel so that it always stays engaged properly with the gear in the rear and the front when uh, at any suspension position. This is a single speed concept for now. Before we go on to the road version, shifting I imagine is a whole other kettle of fish to this one. How do you anticipate you'd be able to get around that? On this bike, the fundamentals of the shifting mechanics and don't really change for the full suspension version. The way we've designed the extending drive shaft and the pivoting drive shaft mean that all we have to do is apply the technology from our shifting one to this frame to make it, uh, to make it real. One of the big kind of concerns has been around kind of performance in mud and that yep. sort of thing. How do you anticipate this would perform in those conditions? Yeah, so this would perform pretty well when it comes to fine particulates and, and dust and small contamination. The bearings are sealed um, and then the pressure will remove most of the fine contamination. Uh, the big challenges are like sticks and mud and actual stones. So to solve that, we, uh, we think that really a cover is going to be the way to go forward. On our aero bike, there's an aero cover for it, but that's not just for aerodynamics, it's also contamination as well. And I guess another, probably quite a fair question, on the road side of things, you know, we have uh, kind of benefits or improvements to reducing drag and rolling resistance, whatever you want to call it. On a mountain bike, why would you want this system? Uh, there's a few benefits beyond just the efficiency. The efficiency gains stay, um, but one of the big ones is we remove the large vulnerable rear derailleur that uh, hangs out down there in a really dangerous space, which is a big advantage. And then there's the efficiency gains. And then you can really partner this drivetrain concept with a lot of other really cool drivetrain ideas like um, uh, gearboxes and the like that often suffer from drag and efficiency loss. That's one of the big issues with the gearbox. So if you can cut into some of those losses with uh, something like this, you could really um, kind of get the, the future. So there you go, if you're a willing collaborator, you like the look of this, you're a brand who wants to be at the forefront of drivetrain technology, speak to this man. So as you can see, the road version is quite popular. We're on a busy schedule today, so we're not gonna be able to get right in there. But Alex, would you mind just explaining what's new with this version of the drivetrain? This one, the big thing is that it shifts. So making it shift was our big challenge over the last year. So the basic mechanism behind it shifting is that we only we move the pinion, which is the rear rotating element, in two halves, so that the half that is not engaged with the gear moves so that you don't have to overcome the torque of the drivetrain and then that engages with the ring and then the second half moves to catch up. So it moves in two steps at all times so that we don't have to have a powerful motor to overcome the load and it also means that it doesn't have to be nearly as fast to move across um, so that it can all be kind of realistic. So, so is it a mechanical shifting mechanism or is it driven by motors? It's kind of an electronic yeah. one. So it's driven by motors. There's one motor, a uh, very simple system actually. We managed to get to. So one motor does one motion to do a complete shift. Everybody loved to say it in the comments, but they were concerned about uh, kind of how it handles under load. Do you want to do you want to deflect the haters yeah. and say how it works and how it handles load? Well, the number one thing is it does work, <laughs> uh, and then it does handle load. So we have been riding them. Um, so we've been riding them kind of at the velodrome, pushing the speeds. We've ridden them up to 45k an hour now uh, without any damage. We've pushed the limits, and then we start to see the kind of the limits of our prototype components and and how it is. So. Uh, with better designs and uh, better materials, we'll be able to push the speed and push the power even further. Thank you so much, Alex, for talking us through yeah, this. Definitely. It's early days yet, but we're very excited to see what Ceramic Speed has planned for the future, and in particular, 
we're pretty impressed by the mountain bike one and maybe maybe we'll be racing on that in a few years time but again thank you alex and have a great show yeah you too nice meeting you guys